Hello, my name is Ara Keshishian, and I would like to talk about thyroid hormones and their functions. Thyroid gland is the uh, largest endocrine gland in our body. Um, it has two lobes, left and right, and there's a middle connection, the isthmus, that connects the left and right, and essentially allows the release of the hormones uh, that we'll talk about uh, on the next few slides into the bloodstream. Um, it functions to control the metabolism, the protein synthesis, it controls the heart rate, um, it also controls the body sensitivity to other hormones, uh, regulates the temperature, uh, amongst others. Um, the hormones that are produced are the T3 and T4 and calcitonin, um, and uh, we'll go over them on the next few slides as to the specifics between all of those. Uh, specifically, when it comes to um, uh, weight loss surgery, we always talk about the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. Um, the thyroid dysfunction in a case of hypothyroidism would result in weight gain, which is important to actually make sure that the patient's thyroid levels are proper before they have surgery. And parathyroid uh, hormones have to do with low vitamin D uh, absorption um, and or process. Parathyroid hormone gland uh, diseases are discussed somewhere else. Looking specifically at the regulation of the thyroid gland, um, th there is essentially uh, regulated through different mechanisms, through different levels. Um, hypothalamus at the base of the uh, brain um, releases a thyroid releasing hormone, which goes to the anterior pituitary at the base of the brain. Um, and the thyroid releasing hormone um, stimulates the release of the thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary and this through the bloodstream goes to the thyroid gland and thyroid gland then releases the T3 and T4 which essentially goes into the end organ, the, 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 the cells of our body to do its metabolic function. So you have the TRH releasing TSH which releases the T3 and T4. Um, the release of the T3 and T4 through a negative feedback um, slows down and reduces the release of the TSH and TRH. And this is sort of the checks and balance mechanism to make sure that when the body has adequate levels of the T3 and T4, it sends a signal to the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus um, reducing and driving down the release of the TRH and the TSH. Um, going through this again, the hypothalamus uh, is where the thyroid releasing hormone is um, produced and it's released um, through the stalk. Uh, this travels, um, th 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 so the thyroid releasing hormone travels to the anterior pituitary which releases the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, sends a signal to the thyroid gland, which releases the T3 and T4. Um, when the metabolic function of the 3 and T4 are attained, this essentially sends a feedback mechanism system to cut down the secretion of the TRH and the TSH so that the patient doesn't continuously get stimulated. And we see this negative feedback mechanism throughout a um, number of different systems in the human physiologic bodies uh, functioning um, as a way of regulating internal uh, mechanisms. Um, the negative uh, feedback um, has to do with the T3 and T4 regulating the TSH and TSH production is suppressed when the T4 is high. TSH is also blunted with ex uh, excessively high uh, iodine concentration, the concept being that when you have too much iodine and you're absorbing to create the T4, that may again drive the, the, the T3 and T4, that may drive up the um, thyroid hormone, which is what you sort of want to avoid. Uh, iodine and thyroxine necessarily for T3 and T4 production, as well as the thyroid globulin and the uh, uh, TPO um, are all targets for the autoimmune diseases, and we'll sort of uh, look at this in a sec. Um, let's just briefly look at the specifics of how um, thyroid uh, hormones are synthesized. 
because then we'll appreciate what some of the disease problem, disease conditions that affect this are. So on the right hand of the picture, the, there's a bloodstream. And if you can think about this as having essentially a, a series of apartments that has windows on one side and hallways on the other side, so you have two ways of getting things in and out, and the, the each uh, uh, sort of uh, thyroid cell, the, 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 the follicular cells is where the sort of the business of the whole thing takes place, and there's a lot of things that take in and out in order to uh, produce the uh, uh, th T3 and T4, uh, essentially. So we have the iodine, which is absorbed on the right side, uh, along with the sodium through a particular cell into the thyroid follicular cell. So that's at the blue um, cell that's sort of sitting in the middle of the picture. And one of the things that immediately happens is that though you get the iodine that goes from one side of the follicular cell gets processed um, and is taken into the uh, thyroid follicle, which is sort of the hallways of the apartment, if you would. Now, so, so far all we've accomplished is take the iodine that's absorbed through our GI tract from the bloodstream, taking it through the follicular cell and put it in the hallway uh, of the follicular colloid. That's where sort of some of this completion uh, of the... Um, uh, or, or the creation of some of these uh, compounds that eventually will become the thyroid hormones. Um, during this, uh, while this is taking place, the, tra the, the transportation of the iodine from bloodstream into the uh, center of the column of these thyroid cells locations, uh, within each thyroid follicular cell, uh, through a whole complex biochemical uh, reaction sort of the, 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 uh, through the endoplasmic reticulum, the cells are created with chains of amino acids, then through exocytosis, which is essentially spitting out of those cells into the small, uh, into the small pockets, into the center part of that uh, uh, connection where all of the, the thyroid cells are facing, that's where the mixing of the iodine and these um, thyroglobulin takes place when they go through their own chemical reactions um, then they are taken back through endocytosis within the follicular cells um, and through a whole bunch of other biochemical reactions um, eventually the th uh, thyroxine and thri uh, thyronine, uh sort of the, the, the cells functional uh, components of the thyroid uh, hormones are made and then they're pumped back into the blood. So um, T3 and T4 are, uh, that are produced require dietary iodine and the efficiency of the iodine decreases the production of the T3 and T4 and that will cause simple goiters so if the cells become, the, the, the thyroid gland becomes swollen. 20% of the thyroid hormone is T3 and 80% is T4. Uh, the T3 has a greater action uh, on the target cells, so even though there's less of a T3 produced, it is um, it has a higher functional level than the T4. T4 has a uh, longer half-life, um, and uh, you can essentially t cleave T4 and uh, take the T4, take the iodine off, and take it, make it T3, which is a functional. So the body throughout on a continuous basis produces much more you know four times more t4 which has less um, level of functionality on the end cells but lasts longer and when the body needs more thyroid hormone then it can take the t4 and convert it to three which is sort of more of the active metabolite version the thyroid function um increases metabolic rate by increasing the sodium potassium ATPase, which is a cell, uh, sort of a pump that uh, cause, uh, causes an electrical uh, imbalance sort of ion, at an ionic level. Um, it's necessary for normal uh, brain maturation and normal menstrual cycles. Uh, uh, it uh, clears cholesterol from circulating plasma. It uh, is needed to convert uh, Keratin to vitamin A, uh, which is one of the reasons why in extreme, extreme cases, patients with hypothyroidism may start developing some uh, night blindness to some degree. Increases rate of glucose absorption from the small intestine. 
uh, controls heart rate, cardiac output, and essentially blood pressure on the systolic and diastolic component. It also increases the gut motility, um, uh, the uh, bone turnover, sort of the breakdown and rebu rebuilding of the bone, um, and maintains a ventilatory response to hypoxia. So essentially, you, you know, extreme uh, hypothyroidism can cause death, essentially. Um, so just purely looking at the hypo and hyperthyroidism, looking back at the initial um, the sort of control mechanism of the TSH that we had. So a hypo meaning low. A hypothyroidism will have high TSH. So if I have low thyroid level, I would expect the enzymes, the chemicals, the hormones that tell that I have low thyroid to be high to produce more thyroid. So with hypothyroid patient, I have lower T3, T4, and uh, and free T4, and I have very high TSH. With hyperthyroid, when my thyroid is overacting, as we saw with the negative feedback, that will send a signal to drive down the TSH and the TRH. So with the TSH will be low, and I'll have a high T3, and T4 will be high, and the free T4 will be high. And the difference between T4 and the free T4 is that the free T um, is uh, sort of not bound to the protein. Um, continuing with this discussion, um, there is primary hypothyroidism. So if I have hypothyroidism primarily because of the thyroid dysfunction, you have a low T4, you have a high TSH and high TRH. Uh, pituitary hypothyroidism, as it speaks, it has to do with the pituitary. So you have a high TRH, so hypothalamus is sending the signal to the uh, pituitary, but the pituitary isn't doing its job, so there is less TSH and less T4 because there is no TSH to stimulate the T4 uh, formation. Hypothalamic hypothyroidism, um, this is sort of coming from the hypothalamus itself, so when the hypothalamus isn't functioning well, it will not release the TRA, uh, TRH. When the TRH is not released, you have less TSH, and when you don't have enough TSH, you'll have low T4 and T3 level. When you have pituitary hyperthyroidism, um, and this is secondary, you will have low TRH, so but you will have high TSH and high T4. That's Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune disease. Um, the T4 will be elevated, TSH and TRH will be low. In Graves' disease, uh, we have thyroid receptor antibodies that are binding and stimulating the TSH receptors, which causes the release of the T4. So in that picture, you have uh, high T4 and low TSH and TRH levels. So these are all um, uh, sort of examples of hypo-low thyroid and hyper-high thyroid functions. When it, uh, Talking about decreased thyroid functions, decreased hypothyroidism will have decreased T4 and TSH and increased T, uh, I'm sorry, decreased T4 and T3 and increased TSH uh, with few exceptions that we talked previously. The T4 main thyroid hormone secreted uh, decreases uh, uh, proper negative feedback, causing an increase in TSH. Uh, and um, th there is an autoimmune uh, condition for hypothyroidism, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis in which uh, there is an antibody against the TPO, um, thyroid globulin, and TCH. Um, so Hashimoto's thyroiditis versus a grave disease, sort of the hypo versus hyper. In hypothyroidism, there is a whole slew of um, clinical pictures that may present, including from weight gain, poor appetite, hair loss, poor hearing, memory, and concentration, depression, uh, and on and on. So it's very important that when patients present um, and are evaluated, we don't just rely on a patient's TSH level and say, well, the fact that you're losing hair, you're depressed, you have, or you've gained weight, um, uh, we should just be overlooking it because your the, the patient's th TSH level is, for example, normal. Increased thyroid hormones. 
um, hyperthyroidism, increased T4 and TSH, uh, T3, and decreased TSH. Um, uh, unlike the uh, you know Hashimoto's we talked previously, that's hypothyroid. Graves' disease is a, is a hyperthyroid state or thyroid toxicosis. In the extreme case, it becomes thyroid storm. Uh, Graves' disease, uh, there is a thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin and acts similarly like the TSH continuously increasing the T4 and T3 release. And as we talked about, you know, 80% is released as T4 and then they can be cleaved to function as T3, which is more active form. Risk factors, genetic predisposition, history of rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes and smoking. Thyroid storm is very rare, but they could have catastrophic uh, complication, um, uh, fever, dehydration, tachycardia, and even death. Treatment for uh, Graves' disease is radioactive iodine to destroy the uh, thyroid gland. Uh, later uh, supplementation with levothyroxine and in some cases also surgery may be indicated. Um, increased thyroid uh, patients, fine hair, exophthalmus, which is sort of when the um, eyes appear to be uh, large, uh, a goiter, large uh, thyroid gland, uh, sweating, palpitation, irritability, weight loss, and tremors. Uh, thyroid hormone replacement therapy is T4 hormone replacement is of the choice because it has a half a longer half-life, better absorption from the GI tract, and the T4 can be broken down to T3 for maximum effect on the target. T4 also helps to regulate the negative feedback loop by lowering the TSH once the proper level and physiologic responses have been attained. Um, th th there's essentially two gross classification or classes of supplements that can be taken the bovine supplement versus the synthetic bovine supplements are natural made from dried and powdered thyroid glands of cattle they're available over the counter or prescription there are minimal side effects uh, caution overdosing and uh, zoonic uh, disease um, one of the problems with the bovine supplements at least in some literature that uh, I've read is sort of the dosing issue that uh, the patients will report uh, significant variability between one brand and another because of the variability in the dosing. Synthetic hormones uh, are much more predictable. They're available by prescription, not natural. There could be possible allergy issues and moderate adverse action and uh, caution, just like uh, the natural bovine uh, supplements. Overdosing is always an issue. The thyroid hormone replacement therapy should uh, ease the standard treatment for underactive thyroid in, um, and treatment will require one to two weeks to start seeing the effectiveness and doses may need to be altered depending on the patient's symptoms, weight gain, weight loss, etc. Um, patients need to continuously pay attention to their uh, change in medication and metabolic state. Um, uh, it's very important also to remember that, um, you know, when we're when a patient is evaluated, there is a variability on the laboratory results as well as the patient's clinical picture. So a patient that has signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism um, should not be discounted because they have a normal TSH level. Uh, you know, Long-term effect of thyroid replacement therapy include cardiovascular, neuropsych neuropsychiatric, as well as metabolic, such as osteoporosis. It's side effects that we should all keep in mind, realizing that a hypothyroid patient will have a whole other series of complications. So we're just essentially having to balance one versus the other. Thank you. Have a good day.